Anna, chapter 14, and uh, starting at verse 1 of Ezekiel chapter 14. And uh, it's not the easiest of books to understand. Uh, the, yeah. Verse 14, verse 1. Now some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat before me. That's Ezekiel. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts and put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. Should I let myself be inquired of at all by them? Therefore, speak to them and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Every one of the house of Israel who set up his idols in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity, and then comes to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols, that I may seize the house of Israel by their heart, because they are all estranged from me by their idols. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Repent, turn away from your idols, and turn your faces away from all your abominations. For anyone of the house of Israel, or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who separates himself from me, and sets up his idols in his heart, and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity, then comes to a prophet, to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him myself. I will set my face against that man and make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet is induced to speak anything, I, the Lord, have induced that prophet and I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among my people Israel. And they shall bear their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be the same as the punishment of the one who inquired, that the house of Israel may no longer stray from me, nor profane, prof, profane any more with all their transgressions, but, they, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God, says the Lord God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. And, and when the, the rabbis, in, well, in rabbinic <coughs> studies, when they would speak about the book of Ezekiel, they would be teaching it to the maturer ones in, in their congregations. And when we look at the Old Testament, we constantly, constantly see this battle with idolatry. That the cultural idols of the nations keep on corrupting the people of God in the Old Testament. And here we're seeing the elders of Israel being corrupted by the idols so much so their belief in these idols were so entrenched within their hearts that they come to Ezekiel to seek the word of the Lord and God saying like Ezekiel don't you speak to them I will speak directly to them and I will deal with them I will cut them off you see the ancient world believed any creation of art a sculpture a picture partook of the essence, the soul, the spirit of the object that it represented. For example, a picture of a tree, they believed, contained a part of the essence of a tree. The idol contained part of the essence of a god. So anything offered to the statue, to the idol, was being given straight to the false god. And this type of thinking is called pre-logical thinking and it was 
the extremely popular in Ezekiel's day. You make the object and it, part of the essence of that, what it represents is in, in that object. And alongside this idolatry in Ezekiel's day ran the materialism. Give the idol your food, give the idol your money, and you'll become rich. You will prosper. In reality, the priests ate the food and took the money. So in a general sense, idolatry was a system of meeting your own selfish desires and pleasures and gratification. It was, if I give this to the idol, then I can receive and become wealthy. This pre-logical idea, the statue, the idol, contains the essence, the soul, the spirit of a God. And I can get what I want. This thinking was becoming so popular amongst the leaders of Israel. The religious view and practices of idol worshippers were now in the hearts of the elders. It wasn't just a thought problem, it was a heart problem. A prophet and a prophet Ezekiel, he is led, he is directed by God to expose it. See, verse 3, God speaking. Should I let myself be inquired of at all by them? They had the truth. They had the Ten Commandments, the Old Testament law. They know the ways of God. And yet they're inquiring of a false spirit. The sin of idolatry risks cutting off, risks God cutting off his word from his unfaithful people. God will only be patient and long-suffering for so long. And look out when God's patience runs out. The elders should have known better. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me, was being broken. The Israelites looked around and they saw what the Babylonians had. They'd been taken into captivity. And they see the power of Babylon. They see the successful culture of Babylon and how advanced it is in its technology. And the elders of Israel say, we want this. The elders thought they would be the same as Babylon and so they break the first commandment. And we can do the same. We can look around at this world and we see what others have and what others are doing and it looks like they're getting away with it and we can think, I wouldn't do that. Oh, I wouldn't mind a piece of that pie. You know? And we too get this into our hearts and it exalts itself before and above God. So what does Ezekiel say <coughs> to the problem? Verse 4, he lets them know God would answer according to their idolatry, according to the multitude of their idols. Their elders will encounter God's. They will, the elders will encounter God's Judgment and not a word from the prophet. They will experience the wrath of God from Ezekiel chapter 14. God would judge the elders of idols as an act of cleansing his people. See, God wants a people for himself whose hearts are clean, who, who, whose hearts are pure and love him with all of their heart and all of their strength. And in verse 6, the house of Israel would, would repent of their abominations. That's what God wants. That's what he's calling for. He's calling, turn back to me. And is God calling the church today saying, turn back to me. 
back to my word. See, verse 7 is very clear. Ezekiel was not to give any answer to a Hebrew who committed an act of idolatry. God himself would answer by verse 8, cutting off that person from amongst his people. Then verse 9 says, And if the prophet is induced to speak anything, I, the Lord, have induced that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among my people. Here, a prophet may be tempted to sell his prophecy to an idolater for money. And they may be put under pressure to, to say what the, the, what the idolater wants to hear so then that prophet can have a bit of popularity. But they would be punished by God by a false prophecy. See, he, that he or she gives, men and women were both prophets. God will use that act of idolatry. The, the sin of the act of idolatry will be punished. False prophecy too will bring punishment. Does that mean that God is the author of evil? No. Absolutely not. When we look at Romans 1 verses 18 to 21, God abandoned such people to the corruption of their sin. God shows us the right way to walk in. He showed the elders of Israel the right direction. The elders went away from God. God doesn't force them to follow Him. The elders loved the idols. They loved their sin more than God. They loved the false prophecies more than God's word. And now the truth that they had, they rejected it. To be like the pagan culture around them. And God says, if you want to go that way, you can go that way. But you will be punished. See, God in verse 6, he gave them time to repent. To get right with him. But they do not do it. So verse 11, what God wants is a people for himself. God does not want us. To have the influence of, of idols in our heart. Pre-logical thinking that is so radically selfish. But a pure heart that loves Him. That knows Him. And we have to look at ourselves and say, Is my heart right with the Lord? Or have I got things in my heart that take the place of, of God? And I'm just dabbling with the word of God. And I'm just dabbling with God to appease my conscience. But my heart is so far from the Lord. And if our hearts are so far from the Lord, we must get on our knees. We must repent. We must confess it to Him and get back into the holy presence of God before it's too late and the door is shut and we're cut off. So the question you know, we, we can ask ourselves as well, is are we as Christians, are we affected by the ideas of other spiritual practices? Have the other spiritual practices and the ideas and the concepts come into our hearts? I would say in some cases, yes. We are under this incredible influence, if you like, from, uh, I'd say, a pagan world. <coughs> See, way back, at, for example, I'll get my breath, way back at the beginning of the 20th century, there was a lady from Manchester, England, and her name was Alice Bailey. Many of you may not have heard of Alice. Some of us, unfortunately, have. And, but Alice, she starts off with, with Christianity. But her husband, who, who was a minister, soon put her off because he was extremely violent towards her. And so eventually they get divorced. She ends up moving to New York. But Alice, she rejects Christianity and she begins to channel two different spirits um, as she becomes an occultist. 
And she coins the phrase New Age. She becomes a prophetess in the New Age, a New Age spokeswoman, and she writes down ten points that must ten points that must prevail to stop or remove Christianity or merge in with Christianity. Alice Bailey wrote a ten point charter to destroy Christianity so that New Age philosophy may become the one world religion. And oh, it's already up. Hey, good on it. <laughs> so it's interesting, these ten, this ten point charter of Alice Bailey, the New Age founder, are as follows. And you might recognize some of this. And this is what she wrote down at the beginning of the 20th century, or just before. <coughs> Take God and prayer out of the educational system. We see that has happened. Reduce parental authority over children. We see that has happened. Destroy the Judo-Christian family structure, or the traditional Christian family structure. We see that has happened. If sex is free, then make abortion legal and make it easy. We see that happen. Make divorce easy and legal. Free people from the concept of marriage for life. That has happened. Make homosexuality an alternative lifestyle. It's happened. Debate art. Make it run mad. We see that so clearly now in the, in the art world. So much art that's coming out is just pornographic. Use media to promote and change mindsets. That's happened. Create an interfaith movement. That's happened. I saw this week, I saw the Pope doing a ceremony with some Native American Indian um, calling spirits from the West and from the East. <coughs> the grandmother and the grandfather from East and the West opening portholes. Ten, get governments to make all these things law and get the church to endorse the changes. This is straight from the pit of hell. And Satan is behind it, and he told the world what he was going to do through this woman from Manchester, Alice Bailey. Alice was under the influence of an antichrist spirit, and many are following her ten points today, and they don't even know it. Alice, a false prophetess, wrote this before these ideas were acceptable when she rejected Christianity. We need to make sure the, the spirit of this age has not corrupted our hearts, has not corrupted our thinking. When we say, I know best, and it goes against our faith, we can turn that idea into an idol and we need to pull it down so that we can submit ourselves to the Lord in our hearts. We make an idol out of that idea. Hence we need to be submit to submit our thinking to Christ and to God's word so we may have sanctified thinking, a renewed thinking. For the glory of God. God gives us all time to repent and to turn to Him. But if we love our sinful lifestyle, God says, okay, you can live that way. But your actions, you will reap what you sow. God may give you over to a sinful lifestyle of your choice. But it leads to punishment, it leads to judgment, it leads to being cut off from God. When we seek God and know Him through Jesus Christ our Lord, we, we, we have God's favour. 
We enjoy God. We know God. We know his ways. We long to be in his presence and to have his direction. And we know we are set apart for this world for himself. The elders of Israel made a terrible decision. May we not be so foolish. May we stand before God in the victory of Christ Jesus on the cross as we walk the narrow path. We need to be like Ezekiel and stay true to God's word and not endorse the philosophy of the world and new ideas and false prophecies and strange harebrained doctrines that are around. As Paul, the apostle, said in 2 Timothy 3 verse 14, I read this to close, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. If Israel's leaders stayed in the word, they would have been wise and they would have been saved. Let us stay in the word and be saved and be wise and not corrupted by the philosophies and the ideas of this world. Let us walk that narrow path before a holy God in the power and the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ because when we repent of our sin and confess it and come to him, he forgives us. He cleanses us with his precious blood and fills us with the Holy Spirit and writes our names in the book of life. We are a chosen people set apart for the Lord God Almighty. We do not conform and walk in the world's footsteps. Jesus. Is he our king? Is he our high priest? Amen. Are we following him? Do we know this persecution is coming? That it's looming, it's growing in momentum. But we must stand firm. And Jesus says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And as this persecution, as it counts, we will know the Lord more intimately and more deeply we will be more aware of him because he gives his anointing so that we can stand in these days and do the right thing that brings him glory and in the eyes of the world it's foolish it's foolishness amen Amen. Yeah. Amen. And a lot of street preachers are also getting arrested yeah. for their preaching as well. So let us come, let us exalt the Lord. And as we exalt him and worship him, let's ask him to give us strength and wisdom to stand in these days for his glory.